You know, Mr. Sams? Yeah, I hear a bell ringing. Is yeah. that just in my ears, or is that... I think it's because you're just deranged. you got some problems in your I don't bell? know. The voices are telling me there's a bell going off, so I'm just taking you know, a I'm here. hungry. Oh, yeah? You're hungry? Yeah, I've been thinking about getting some chips and some guacamole. Oh. Uh, old jokes. Yeah, yeah I'm horrible. Think. Yeah. You know what? I, you, you, do you know why I moved up here to the mountains? I, I don't know why you moved well, to the mountains. Well, I, I, I did it because I don't have to worry about my, my lawn. Why it's, not? Oh, yeah, I don't yeah, have to worry about my lawn either. Now I don't have to maintain my lawn molar. Oh, oh, that's ah, good. Ah, well, that's, that's, that's actually that's not so good. Actually, dumb. I know. You know, um, uh, today we're going to be doing a lot of uh, mathematics in our yes, assignments. Yes, we are. And so we're going to be working with some multiplication. Multiplication. We have students in here giving us this. Uh, Is that grown, a good joke or what? Eyes right hey, today now. we're going to talk about titrations, and actually, before we get into too much titrational discussions. Oh, did you guys see this? This is so cool. Yay. Yeah, Sam's versus Bergman. There's, of course, the tall guy with, uh, he never shaves. Never shaves. And Once a week, whether any guy right that. here who's about to set him on fire. But, of course, he's going to add cesium to water, and I'm going to add thermite. I think a thermite beats I don't know. We're, I think we're both going to blow each other up. It's then. not going to be a pretty scene, no. is it? Not at all. Hey, do you know where uh, King keeps his armies? I don't know where King keeps his armies. In his sleeves. In his Sleeveys. His armies. Army his arm in the sleeve. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. I am very slow. Don't you love bad pun jokes? Okay. So we hey, should probably get started here. We probably should because okay. we've just taken a minute of your time. We did. Okay. <laughs> um, adding strong acids and bases to solutions. Right. Yeah. Now, when we add them together, this is called actually a titration. A titration, yeah. You did some of these in regular chem and in your big gigantic project. You did some titration then as well. We've got the fancy Bior Rec. And you have the burette, and you add chemicals to the burette. Yep. And that's how we kind of do that. But we want to know um, when you've reached the equivalence point. Yes. And uh, what's that? what happens at the equivalence point? Well, that's when the moles of the acid. The moles of acid. acid. No bad joke there either. Just moles. Just moles. And equals the moles of base. That's right. So we're looking for the equivalence point. Equivalence. Equal point, right? The equal point. So that's the equivalence point. And that's when the, something's equal. Right. And in our case, what we care about is when the moles of the acid are equal to the moles of the base. Right. Okay? Now, there are two ways that you can tell if you've reached the equivalence point. Yeah, the first, the first, first way you've already done, and that's using an acid-base indicator, usually you're going to see a color change of some sort. So the indicator, there would be a color change. Mm -hmm. The most common, one, most common one we use is phenolphthalein. So there's two you should know. There's phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein is P-H-E-N-O-L. Phenol, P -H -T -H -A -L -E -L -E Phenolphthalein is, uh, uh, it's pink in, in a, a base, base, and it's clear in an acid. These are just uh, good things to know. And then, of course, a bromothymol blue. BTB. Uh, it is a blue in a base. ba 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 ba, ba, ba. And it is a yellow in an acid. Okay. Now. So you're looking for some variety of color change. Yep. The other way is to actually chart the pH um, with something called a pH meter. You've had experience with that. Yep. If you have it out in the internet, it land, it's just a device that measures pH. Yeah. And you measure the volume a little bit at a time, and you record the pH, and you're looking for the what? You're looking for the steep part of the curve where it makes a big, gigantic jump in pH, going from very low to very high, or very high to very low, depending on which direction you're titrating. And so it's the center of the steepest yep, part of the, the graph. Yep, the middle of the So what part. you're actually looking for down here, this one looks like it's about 35 milliliters mm -hmm. on this particular graph that's in your notes. And this one has a pH of 7 at the equivalence point. It isn't always a pH of 7, and no. we will learn about that quite shortly. All right, yep. folks, you need to get out your calculators mm -hmm. because we will be doing lots of problems, problem, problem, problem. Now, you're going to watch us, and we're going to do the problems, but I really think it's good that you solve the problems with your own calculator at the same time yep. and check that Mr. Sams is doing his work right. That's right. I do make mistakes periodically. occasionally makes mistakes. Yeah, I get a little distracted. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to do a... Uh, uh, a boatload of problems. All right. Yeah. What is the pH when 20 milliliters of 0.25 molars hydrochloric acid rick with 0.35 molars of sodium nitrite? Nit okay. Now, first of all, what I want to realize is I've got HCl. Now, actually, let's back up for a second. This is very important to note is that whenever you do, it's all about the reactions. If you get the reactions down, the math is easy. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's my rule. Acid, write this down somewhere on your notes. Acid plus base, always. Rule number one. Acids react with bases. Acids do not react with more acids. More acids. The second thing, second rule is partners. P 
Part. P A R T N. I, I got an extra E in there. Partners, science teachers. Partners always where? On opposite sides of the arrow. Opposite sides of the arrow. In the reaction. Product in the chemical reaction. reaction. So one partner here, one partner here. What do I mean by a partner, Mr. Sands? Uh, so like a weak acid and its conjugate. All things right. that are only different by a hydrogen ion. Okay, so now let's think of this. We have HCl. Mm hmm. All right, pretty H C L. I can't write today, and we have sodium nitrite. Mm -hmm. So N A N O two. Now we get, need to look at these. We are not going to just do that. That's no wrong. So what I need to do is I need to go. Okay, now what am I going to do? Right, gotta, we're looking for things. What yeah. what makes something acidic and what makes something basic? So, so this is a what, Mr. That's Sanders. a strong acid. So all we really care about there is an H plus. So all you care about is the H positive from this guy right here. Yeah. Okay, and then from the NaNO2... Yep, that is a... Is? Well, NO2 is the conjugate of a weak acid. So it's the conjugate base of a weak acid. So who do we not care about? We don't care about sodium. Actually. So we care about the nitrite. Now, yeah. what's the form of the nitrite? That's NO2 with a minus one charge. Unless we have the minus one charge. Now, is this is an acid, Uh huh. and this is a base. Yep. We can mix the acid with the base. We can. So our reaction is simply H positive plus NO2 negative makes HNO2. Two. Yep. Now what we can do is we can uh, do an ice table, or it's actually more of a BC. Yeah, this one you got to do a table. Yeah, right. you got to do your stoichiometry first, and then you do your equilibrium. Let okay. me say that again. You do your stoichiometry first, and then you do your equilibrium. So like first, you do the stoichiometry equilibrium first. Equilibrium second, and then you do the equilibrium. Is, you don't do the equilibrium. No, first? no, I'm, I'm pretty sure you do the stoichiometry first. Always. Always. Okay. And then. You do the what do you mean by the stoic first? Well, we're, we're adding acids and bases, and they're going to react with each other first. And then, if you notice our product, our product there is a weak acid. Weak acids have to do some equilibrium stuff whenever you throw them in water. So first, you react your reactants to make your product, and then that product does this little equilibrium thing. Okay, and so you'll, see, you'll what we see what we mean by this. Is yeah. Now, first of all, we can now work with millimoles. So if we go back yeah, yeah, yeah. to our problem, we have um, a particular variety, 20 yep. milliliters of 0.25 mm -hmm. mole. So, of course, you got to remember this is very important. M times V is mole. Yep, and that gives you, us... You can take them and multiply them. You get them both. So 20 times 0.25, so that's the H positive is what, Mr. Shannon? That is 5 millimoles. 5 millimoles. And if we do the nitrite, we it go is. back... 20 times 0.35, which is 7 millimoles. So we've got 5 and we've got 7. Now, I can quickly do this. It's not terribly hard. I'm sure. going to run out of, uh, looks like H, yep. minus 5. There'll be none of this. Right. Since we're titrating to an endpoint, we're always going to use one of these up. Now, how much nitric acid did I have at the beginning? Uh, none. I had none, because right, we did not have yep. any nitric acid. Nope. And this will be then plus 5, five and that's 5. Okay. Now. So now we've done the stoichiometry. We now those are millimoles. Amounts. We have 5 and 2 mm -hmm. of, oh, wait, Mr. Sams, NO2 negative mm -hmm. and HNO2 are... Those are partners. Partners. Oh, yes, that's right. Hey, guess what? Those are acid-base partners. So we can, uh, and guess what? We have a significant quantity yes, we do. of each. So that means we can use the... David Hasselhoff equation. David Hasselhoff. Henderson Hasselbach Henderson equation. Henderson Hasselbach yeah, equation. Like, uh, Hasselbach. Hasselbach. Yes. Whatever his name is. Okay. Well, what is that equation? It's been a couple of days since yeah. we probably saw that, folks. It's so pH equals pKa mm -hmm. plus the log of the base over the acid. Now, yep. we do need to find the pKa. And I need to grab a textbook and so look at that. So, first of all, we need to know the Ka. The Ka of HNO2 from the book in, or the table in the back of your book. It's coming. Page A24. You are in the right look page, at that. Mr. Hey, hey, I finally figured out where it was. Uh, HNO2 is 4.0 times 10 to the 4 negative 4. 0 times 10 to the minus 4. So if I were to take the pKa, that would be the negative log mm -hmm. of 4.0 times 10 to the minus 4, and that would be 3 point something. 3.40. Right? 3.40. So I can just say the pH will be equal to 3.40 plus the log of the base over the acid. Now yep. remember a very cool thing we learned last time is that if we have millimoles and you have a buffer problem, it is the same you can use the millimoles. Yep. Now, the acid, of course, is HNO2, and the base is the NO2 negative. The acid will always have the extra H, ladies and gentlemen. So this will be the base over the acid, so it's 2 over 5, right? Mm -hmm. So log of 2 over 5, we just then say, and that Plug equals... Plug it in, you get 3.00. 3.00, wow. A perfect pH. Okay. 
Nice, nice. Okay, that was the first example. We'll try and cover these next ones a tad faster. Yeah. Okay, now we have a different situation. Yes. All right, we've got the nitric acid, and we have... Notice, first of all, I am ignoring the numbers. That there's yes. 15 milliliters, and I'm going to worry about all those numbers later. And I've got this thing, and I've got this thing. Now, this looks a little confusing, but this is your acid because it's got H's in a couple of places. And this is the salt of that. So let's kind of, uh, Mr. Sam, one thing I know that you like to do yep. is let's ask ourselves, what is in the beaker? Let's get into the beaker. Put on your little scuba suit, shrink yourself down, jump in the beaker. It's like uh, being in Mrs. Frizzle's class. Yes, you could get shrink your yourself little magic, in magic school bus. School bus. So down. we have nitric acid. I'm going to put that on the outside here yep. for a moment. But when we write nitric acid in the beaker, what do we really have? H plus. We have H positive and, and NO3 minus. NO3 minus. Okay. And our second chemical is this HCO2H. Yep. HCO2H. That is a weak acid, and mm -hmm. so it stays together, and that's just that. Yep. And our third thing was the Na. CO2H. CO. H. And so this is a sodium compound, so the sodium, of course, dissociates. So we have sodium ions, and we have NO2H, negative, right, because it dissociates. CO2H. All right, sorry, CO2H, my bad. Yep. Okay, so now let's decide who reacts with who? Uh, the acid reacts with, with the base. With the base. So we've got to find an acid, okay. Now let's identify. This H positive is a strong acid, right? Yep. And this right here is a weak acid. A weak acid. So we can't obviously react those together. Nope, they will not react. And then we have the nitrate and the sodium. What are we going to do with those? Uh, ignore them. They're spectator ions. They're spectators. They're not important in this whole uh, thing. And the third thing that we care about that is, is we have a weak base. Conjugate base of a, a weak acid. Conjugate yeah, so base of this weak, weak acid. Yep. So this is a weak base. So who's going to react with who? The strong acid is going to react with the weak base. Now why why wouldn't the weak acid react with? They're the partners. Side? Partners do not react with each they other. They show on up opposite on sides. opposite sides. So these will react together. Yeah. So the reaction, folks, is going to be H positive plus CO2H negative makes C H H C O two H. I got yeah. it. Now we can do our B B C C A. Because we do the stoichiometry table. first. That's our. Now we've done the reaction first. Now yep. we're going to do the stoichiometry first. Now we have to go figure out our how much of each have we got. Now right. we've got quite a bit of chemicals here, yep. all over the place here. I've got 15 milliliters mm -hmm. of 0.2 molar. So 15 times 0.20 would be the nitric acid yep. or the H positive, and that's going to be how many? Three millimoles. I got three of those, and then I go back to this one and I say, all right, how much of the buffer? 50 milliliters. Yep. Of 0.25, so 50 times 0.25, was that the acid or that the... Uh, uh, that was the acid. Of the acid. Yep. Is what? Is uh, 12.5. 12 and a half. And then the sodium uh -huh. CO2H... Is 50 times 0.3, which is 15. So 15. So guess what? We have numbers. Who's so going to run out of first? Uh, well Looks like the hydrogen. Yeah, we're going to run out of the hydrogen. Hydrogen first. right there. Yep. So that'll be minus 0.3. Or minus, not 0.3, pardon minus me. Three. Minus 3. Minus 3.0. That's not nothing there. This will be minus 3, and this will be plus 3. So that, of course, is 0. Uh, looks like a 12 to mm -hmm. me. And that looks like a 15 and a half. Guess what, Mr. Sams? Mm. We have... A buffer. We do have a buffer. And because we have significant quantities, we, we have can 12 of one and 15 and a half of the other. Yes. So we can use Mr. Henderson Hasselbacher. Yes, we can. So we can say pH equals the uh, pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. Now, this is a different chemical, so yep. the Ka of this acid of HCO2H is formic from acid. the table is formic acid. It's yeah. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4th. We take the negative log of that, the pKa is equal to, Mr. Sams is furiously typing this in his calculator. Yeah, the pKa is 3.74. 3 3.74. 3 and then plus the log. Oh, I see. Okay, all right. So yeah. you would say equals 3.74 plus the log of the base over the acid. Now, yep. which one is the base? Let's go back for just a moment and take a look. The base is this guy, the CO2H, yep. and then this is the acid. So it will be 12 over 15.5. So that's 12 over 15 and a half, and then you do the math. You get 3.63. 3.63. Nice. Okay.